Entering the 15 p.m. turn, we now engage in the second half of the Solti scenario. And I think as we look at the position in a minute here, as I show you some of the things I did off camera, such as the reinforcements and whatnot, um, we're going to see that the Germans are definitely under some extreme pressure. And there is going to be a question of should we hold out or should we uh, try to uh, withdraw and try to hold a different position and try to break through later or just do a full-out retreat because we might just be cut off from supply very easily. So let me get to explain what happened or what I've done so far. So the weather roll came up as clear, so it's going to be another uh, turn full of air unit use because it's going to be relatively easy to get that in. That's probably going to trend towards the Soviets' favor because they have more planes uh, than the Germans do. Germans still only have four, Soviets now have, what is it, seven planes? So yeah, lots of offensive capability there. If we look at the reinforcements that came in, this is what the Soviet or the Germans got. They got their first division, or first part of the SS. I'm guessing it's the Totenkampf. Uh, they got an engineering unit and one motorized. So not a whole lot, but at least have another unit activated. And they'll get a couple more of the SS units next turn. But it's not a huge unit that comes in, but it's more troops for the Germans, and they need those troops desperately right now. For the, oops, and there we go. For the Soviets, we have the 180th coming in, which comprises of this artillery unit and this sort of anti-tank. Uh, but this is the meat of it, these uh, infantry units. You know, honestly, it doesn't seem like a lot. And there's a uh, recon. Or what is it? Is that a recon? I think so, yeah. I'll look that up to be sure. I mean, it's a lot of those. So, you know, again, another like 12 defense stack, like maybe a little more powerful offensively. But if we take a look at the larger situation here, let me pull back here. So the problem, of course, is that the 183rd here has cut supply, and we'll see up here that these units are an emergency supply. Not only are they going to be able to cut, but if you can see over here, just on the edge of the frame, the 21st Tanks unit are going to be able to cut too, and the 180th can start moving sort of along this trail and go this way and present numerous headaches. And you start to see as the German player that there's going to be not just one potential break or two, but potentially even three breaks in your supply line. And we really don't have the forces to deal with that currently. Um, these units are the only ones that were able to, except the third motorized stadium supply. In terms of the 8th Panzer, this is it. So just, you know, a couple motorcycle guys, a tank, you know, two armored cars, nothing great. All these units now are in emergency supply. The artillery units were not resupplied because uh, even though they're on emergency supply, that does not mean they just get resupplied on shells and whatnot. So they can just still use their defense and not suffer, um, you know, movement or ER penalties for being out of supply, but they don't get to go back to their not fired side. So automatically we're looking a lot weaker here because that was essentially, it was a big part of the stack. Yeah. Like, so there's artillery, artillery fired, fired. Um, that one's not, so I might as well slip that one guy on top. Um, but regardless, the 70th is coming down, the 21st tanks are coming up, and we don't necessarily have a lot of pressure in the front door, but we're getting a lot of pressure on the sides, and soon we'll be out of supply. If we hold the airplane hex, we could keep these two hexes in supply, but then you've got to have a third hex that's holding it, and it won't be in supply, or you could have one here and one here, and see the town hex to the Soviets, not really pleasurable. Um, but remember, this is the victory point hex, so I'm, I am fortifying this, but really, this is the really the one I gotta hold. Um, of course, the third motorized is just up here. It's gonna start gathering its forces. We're gonna have to figure out what we need to do with the when it, or the two thirty seventh unit up there, and these guys are holding out here. So I rolled for initiative, and the Germans won again. <laughs> so the Soviets have yet to seize initiative from the Germans, and this was an, uh, not even a close roll. Um, that meant that the Germans got to put in five tokens because they got their two for the 8th Panzer, two for the 3rd Motorized, and one for the, uh, the SS unit that just came in. And that meant that the Soviets could put in six different tokens. So the only problem is that the 180th came in this turn for them. So I came into the same problem I had last turn where I was trying to figure out which activation token was I going to leave out uh, and which
which ones we're going to put in. The ones that left out, our good friends, the third tanks, once again, will not be activated. And surprisingly, for well, not surprisingly in my mind, I took out the 183rd uh, because by doing that, I could put in the activate any formation marker in the cup. And if we look, the 183rd's mission is largely accomplished. <laughs> they are holding there. Um, if I drew their activation marker, I would basically just maybe try to uh, build strong points, I guess. I don't know. And they're probably going to get attacked, so the strong points aren't going to last unless somehow they just got drawn last. The truth is I don't need to activate them. And if I do need to activate them and I haven't used my activate any formation marker and they're the most pressing formation that needs activation, I can activate them. But by keeping them outside of the cup, I have the activate any formation marker inside the cup. And that's going to give me a lot more flexibility that I've been lacking as a Soviet player. And you know, quite honestly, I've been doing pretty well despite that sort of lack of flexibility. If you just even look at the Soltsy, this 21st Tanks movement is really developing well. And uh, as we knew, that, that attack up here was very successful earlier. So, um, yeah, we're, just gonna, we're gonna see even a little bit more edge given to the Soviets, you know. They make it bad draws. They got really favorable draws last turn. So, but you know, it's, it, the, the odds are beginning to stack against the Germans. And the question is going to become, can we divert enough forces to reestablish supply, which is beginning to look more doubtful? Um, that's the big question. So we'll see how that goes out. First hit pulled was third motorized. So we're going to take a look up here. We're going to try to figure out what we want to do with that unit up there because um, it's, you know, it's formidable and it can still cut our supply line and we don't need to be cut. And uh, so these guys might get a little breather or reprieve. So we'll see what happens when we come back third motorized. Here's a view of the third motorized uh, as they are on the board, the entire third motorized. Uh, you know, they're kind of doing a little C constellation here, drawing along the roads and trails leading up to this northern uh, minor road. The problem, of course, is that we have this unit up here. It's very pesky <laughs> uh, Soviet infantry, uh, what is that, battalions, three of them together, so a sizable force. Uh, the problem is, is that I, he's buried in woods, and no unit except for those immediately around him can really do anything to hurt him. And I just, I think I found a way to put the perfect pincer on him, but it won't be very powerful because I can't get any other units uh, as close as I want to. And what I mean by that is that you can see I have sort of that recon armored car units there. They have really impressive movement values, but because it's, you know, they get only one on trail and other and because of zone of control effects, they just can't get close enough to get that attack. And the same thing goes for this unit here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to get the camera there. So the same thing goes for this unit here, which is only a, a weakened stack of weakened motorized infantry. And that stack is powerful. It has uh, uh, artillery support. And I even tried to think of a way I could do an overrun here. And because uh, I was like, oh, wait a minute, let me. I was like, I kind of have access to road. What happened was I realized I could go this way and get around the zone of control and then take advantage of this. But what happened as I was going through it, then I realized I'm just one half a movement point shy of being able to overrun this hex. Uh, I would be able to do it three to two. It wouldn't be like amazing, but at the same time, the stack is fairly weak. Um, and it, you know, it'd be a great way to strike around here and then come to the rear and they can't use their artillery, which is the main reason I wanted to do an overrun. Uh, they have some fairly powerful artillery assets and I can't even go this way to do an overrun. Uh, and I certainly can't go that way. So it's, uh, but, so I can't, what I'm trying to say is I can't do anything with this guy. He can't really frontal assault. And if he gets left there, uh, he might get swarmed next turn. And they would have to do something like all of their forces commit to a two to one uh, assault, but they can afford to take step losses and I really can't. So especially already weakened, I would already destroy like four points. So I need to pull them back. I need to pull them back to a point where I think they'll be fairly safe. Uh, and I think that's going to be Bolshoi Udrugorsh. I think I'm going to pull them back to here. That's like the easiest move I'm going to make right now. And then I'm going to describe the other ones. And one, and... Uh, is that going to be really... The reason I'm trying to be is I, I want to make sure that... I pull away far enough so that... Uh, this unit has to dislodge itself if it wants to attack. And thus leave this victory point hex open. And I know they don't want to do that. 
or at least not without good, really good reason or odds, so I'm, I'm just going to leave that be. Um, so I think he's going to go there because that's a good city. It gives him plus one. Uh, that's already a good advantage. So, and it also keeps him kind of close to some artillery assets that he may not use in this next battle, as you'll see. Okay, so the one thing these units, they can't get into combat, but they can advance up and perform the blocking part of this pincer move that you're going to see here. So, the first thing I'm going to do is take this guy, and he's just going to come up and go directly here, and that's going to cost three movement points. One, two, three. This guy has two motorcycle infantry who have seven movement. So they're going to go, is it one, two, because it trails there, three, four, five, six, seven. And that puts that pincer there. So when I attack him, the only way he can go is off map, which kills him, uh, or he has to come down here. So the killer move is putting a unit right here that has a zone of control. Uh, at first I thought about putting this anti-tank unit, oh, I'm sorry, he was up here, this anti-tank uh, unit. But then I realized I could take these guys in the south and kind of bring them up, and that's a good roll for them because it gets them in a good position to further launch attacks to the east on the next activation. Because I'm running out of activations, there are, what, one, two, three, four, five turns, so there's ten activations of the third motorized left, so now nine after this turn. Uh, a lot to accomplish and not a lot of turn or not a lot of ability to move my troops to do so. So let's move my guys, the motors, or the armored cars, up. I'll be one, two, three, and four, and... So they can go there, bring this recon unit up, I think it's a recon, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six. And how many is that? That's two, four, six. Yeah, we'll just keep them there. And this guy will come up and go, and one, and two, and three, and he'll join that stack there. Make this kind of the artillery park or whatever you call it a little grouping of artillery it's kind of dangerous but there's no real soviet threat that i'm that worried about and hopefully this attack works well and if i do that yeah then i can put this guy over here okay great um perfect i'm sure i still have artillery i can get that far i did all that movement and i'm like oh okay it was five one two three i can do that five six five okay good Okay, good. Everybody's at five. Let's get a little closer. Sorry if that was a little weird camera angle there. Okay, so there's the main units involved. And the idea is that even if I attack him and get a retreat, then no matter where he goes, he has to go through at least zone of control, and he ends up in his own control. So any retreat result I get will be his death. Um, or this, not he. I say that singular. This stack's death. Um, so let's see what we can get here. Uh, we're going to do a mobile attack. We have four there. This is 18. It's uh, five. Yeah, 16, 18. So we have 22, and we're going to try to launch. Uh, we need at least two more points, so we're going to launch this four. And because it's really important, I'm going to use this uh, Arco unit in a minute. Normally, the first thing you do is do air support. Um, I've been maybe kind of getting some of the air support rules wrong. I've kind of been missing some of the finer points, the rules, and I really apologize. I don't think it's been that bad because usually, usually the HQs are close, but in this case, the HQ isn't close. And you can only use close air support if it's within command range of an HQ, which totally makes sense. I don't know if I've been botching that. That's kind of dumb rule to, to mess up because it's so easy to remember because it's just tied to the idea of, well, of course, it's in command. It can order that plane. Duh. Like, does this unit have... The ability to command air, probably not. It needs to go through its HQ, right? So it doesn't get air support. Um, I will be probably using air support because I need this unit to at least attack, and it is going to be at best a, a two to one attack. Um, and because I really need to kill this unit and move on with my advance here, that's why I'm going to spend my air points on it. You can commit up to two air units also in a battle. Uh, if it's an overrun, just one. I've kind of been flubbing that, not to huge effect because I've been kind of stingy with my air. It's been cloudy a lot. I am going to use this plane here. Uh, the Soviets cannot use their plane, so we'll go ahead and roll that. And I won't use command points on this. It's plus one for um, the mobile. And I don't believe 
anything that means the force means anything. Oh, it does. I think it's a plus two. Hmm. Okay, so plus three modifier. Oh, ho, ho. fortune favors the brave. A one. So that's great. We're just going to start tallying up these things. Uh, right here. I'll just go ahead and say uh, minus one for close air support. Okay. Um, so we know that he has 12 and that so far we have 22. We're going to fire off that four unit. It's going to have, uh, the Arco is going to use its command point to help out with that. So it's a six uh, unit. It suffers some, uh, the same kind of uh, penalties the cast did. It's plus three because it's firing on a wood hex. It's plus two. It's also plus one for being mobile. So that equals a plus two overall modifier. Man, yeah, okay, looking good, a good two. So that plant passes total flying colors. Um, could have whiffed on it potentially, but it didn't work. So I get my four points there, that equals now, yeah, 26. So we get our two to one odds that we were looking for. So we did our close air support, we've done our artillery. Uh, he can't do anything, he couldn't react, he couldn't do uh, no retreat, and he can't do um, any kind of other movement. No one can help him out, so he has none of those options. Uh, now we just do a combat coordination check. It's going to be just these two units. I do, I'm going to be lead uniting with these guys. Uh, so I will, let's see, it's plus one. I do want this to work, so I'm going to spend two points. I'm just going to spend every point I can to make sure this attack works. So we're looking at a minus one modifier total. Man, the low rolls keep coming. That's wild. So... Probably gonna roll really bad attack here, and that's the way it goes. Oops, what was I doing? Alright, so we pass our combat coordination. So we have minus one cast. We have um, armor and motorized attacking, so we get our combined arms bonus. And our ER superiority is three. So we get the minus bonus we can. So yeah, that was a fine attack. So I probably didn't even use air there. That's okay. So it's a minus five to the roll on a two to one. Nope, still great low rolls. So that's a zero. So I'm pretty sure that, I mean, I don't even think I have to look, but let's just, just for the sake of clarity, a two to one, if you get a zero attack on mobile combat, is a defender to retreat. So yeah, he bites the dust. There's nowhere you can go. That stack is eliminated. All right, that was huge. I can advance after combat, and because it was mobile, I will. And in fact, what I will do is advance these guys here and here because it's going to be hardest for them to get through the forest on their normal movement, so why not take advantage of our advanced for combat movement? Uh, I'm going to get a plus one on my initiation for the next roll because of that. Uh, so there we go. Very nice. Okay, that had to go well. Probably was overkill to use that, but that's the way it goes. Nice. Third motorized, accomplishing something that probably should have gotten right the first time. Now the next task, of course, will be to come up here and take on Utragorsh uh, and seize it. So let's see who's going to come up next for the Soviets. Oh, the activate any formation comes up right away. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to have to think about what I want to do with that. When I come back, we'll figure out which mystery formation will activate. Getting the Activate Any Formation Marker is kind of interesting. It gives you a lot of flexibility when drawn this early, although it can be a disadvantage in the sense that you don't really know what's going to happen on this turn. And as we've seen over some of the other turns, you can think a battle is or the swing of momentum is going one way, when in fact it's really going uh, to be the other, depending on how you draw the chits. So having this kind of power to choose what you want to do, it's, it's very interesting in this game, right? <laughs> to be able to be like, oh, I can... I can actually dictate some of the flow, right? So the idea is like maybe, oh, I'll activate the 70th and we'll just attack a lot around Saltsy. But here's the deal. I don't need to attack around Saltsy right now because it's already an emergency supply. These units have been cut off, right, because of the uh, heroic efforts of the 183rd. We know the 4th tanks, which is has forces just south here, they're going to be able to cut the road on their activation, right? They don't need two activations to do anything. Who needs two activations to be very useful? The 180th. 
and here's what I'm thinking. They're going to take the southern road. Oops, sorry. They're going to take the southern road. They're going to come up here, and they're going to start cutting around here. Now, why is that important? Well, for one thing, it's another point way down at the other end of the board, and there's only going to be minimal forces to deal with it, just these uh, SS units and uh, sort of this stack of Panzer guys, right? So there are some tanks and whatnot, but we're going to be able to bring in at least two stacks of these guys. So then there'll be, what, fours, threes, and fours, so nothing too powerful, but enough to be a threat up there, and it's probably going to be more than these guys can handle. So to me, the most obvious thing is let's starve out the attackers uh, in Solzy. We'll just call them the heathens, the attackers. Ah, the heathens sounds really bad. They're actually just soldiers. Um, attacking the city. So we'll just save the attackers. Let's just be generous. Oops, I've got this kind of weird lever thing. Sorry about that. Let's get a totally funky view on this. There we go. No, two, two out there. There we go. Sorry, that took a while. Okay. Um, this tripod thing I'm using is very interesting and works really well for the price. I think I paid maybe like six or seven dollars for it and it's done a really good job but sometimes you get into funky positions and it causes me to do this kind of weird like getting the legs together so sorry about the movement um but that's the way it goes right so we'll go over here because these are the guys we're going to focus on and what they're going to do is they're just going to slip along this trail so that way they can come right up here uh so these guys that guy has five but the infantry that we're going to care about has four and they also have this guy's an added bonus, a little recon unit. I think he's, I'm gonna look this up, I keep saying I'm gonna do that, I forget. So it's gonna be four movement, so you have to count your entry hex. Get that guy stacked up, all right. So and one, and two, and three, and four. That's where he can go. These guys come in, they're and one, and two, and three, and four. And this, the artillery unit comes in here and goes and one, and two, and three, and we'll just keep them here in this uh, uh, village. Actually, it's probably safer to go here. No, that looks weird off camera, but the reason it's safer is because of that uh, stack that we already revealed is, of course, panzers uh, and that armor car. It's, some, you know, it's got some powerful uh, ability to attack there. Ooh. Sorry, I see him doing that thing with the octopus legs. Okay. So now I can, uh, on my next activation, when the 180th comes up actually up for their activation, they're going to be able to come up here and have their kind of choice of where they want to cut. They're gonna, they can come up and do this fairly easily because of the trail. They can come up and go across here and then just come up here and cut because they only have to be across here, right? They don't have to be on the road. On the road is good, but being next to the road is also almost as good. Um, so this gives the 180th a lot of flexibility in terms of their cut ability, which is their main... Uh, value right now as a unit. It's a pretty beat up unit. It won't be able to sustain a lot of direct combat with good units. But with some scrappy units or the put together kind of forces that the Germans have left behind in the rear, uh, perhaps a little too thoughtlessly, um, they can be definitely a strong threat. So that's why they got the activated new formation marker. Uh, sorry, that was a lot of rambling to think about, but you know, I enjoy talking about the strategy and thinking, and honestly, if you're watching this video and you think uh, that was a poor choice or I should have done something else, please let me know, or what you think, because, you know, and honestly, it's just that's half the fun of playing the game, right? Just being your own kind of general and putting out different hats. And uh, that's why I like chip pull games, because you can definitely do that a little easier uh, than, say, maybe where it's just like, I go, you go. Because then you can kind of be like, oh, it's, it's just easier to not know what's going to happen in a way, and that's why I really like about chip pull games, I guess, right? The fog of war. It's inherent, it's built in, it's, an, it's a good, clean system most of the time. Uh, so I'm looking forward to trying out other games like that. I just got the Grand, just do a little side range. just got the Grand Tactical Series game, and I'm pretty excited to play that because I really do enjoy this. I think that'd be fun. Rant over. Okay, so let's, uh, that was kind of like not even a rant, that was like a mini rant. Who's up next for, these, for the Germans? Right, the 8th Panzer is going to be up. So, that is going to be dealing with Sultzy. The real question is now, seriously, I'm going to have to, and this is something I'm going to really think about. In my other game, I pulled out pretty much when I realized it was going to be difficult to get out of the pocket. And in that game, the pocket was just limited to being here. But now the pocket is just getting worse and worse. It's not necessarily being a pocket, it's just I'm being cut off. And the, and the pressure is being applied up here and here. 
but the cutting, the, the losing of supply, and it's going further and further away, it looks like. <sighs> but because of that airport hex, if I can hold it, then I get to be able to supply two hexes. So the thought is, you know, should I be trying to hold out Sultzy? If I hold out past next turn, so if I can hold out for a little bit longer, uh, I get three victory points for every turn I hold it. Uh, that's definitely worth a lot in this game, because the victory point totals can get pretty tight in the end. Um, and I've lost a lot of steps, already armor steps, so I need to make up some victory points if I can. Anyway, a lot to think about with the 8th Panzer. So when I come back, 8th Panzer. So as you can see by my scribbling on the board here, I've <laughs> given considerable thought as to what I want to do with the 8th Panzer. Um, and I've come to a few conclusions. One... I forgot about the airport hex thing, even though I mentioned it in a previous video, I forgot that it actually lets two stacks uh, stay in supply. It doesn't let artillery flip, but it keeps two stacks in supply. So I'm going to keep these two stacks holding salty in supply. Um, we're going to be moving some units around, so we're going to need to be really careful about marking who's in emergency supply, who isn't, but uh, for the purposes, these two are good. And because I remembered that, it allowed me to get a little more aggressive and creative with my plans here, which still may come to naught and may be totally disastrous. But let's see how it goes. So the first thing I wanted to do is I want to address some of the cut threats. I can't really deal with these guys right now. I don't really have the firepower to just withstand an attack from them or really bring the pain on them too much. But what I can do is start to unravel this position. And part of doing that is going to involve neutralizing this artillery. If you put a unit with a zone of control, enemy zone of control next to it, the artillery can only target that hex, or it can help itself, but it can't help uh, hexes like it normally could that are far away. So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to take one of my armored cars and move it over here to neutralize that zone, of, or to neutralize this artillery, so that the other units, including this stack, can come here and tackle this uh, stack, which is actually just uh, three infantry units with a total of nine uh, defense. I can get a mobile attack on it. I won't be taking a stream crossing bonus because this stack can come over here and attack. So that's going to be my first step towards unraveling this position. Um, hopefully I, I want to use the next activation, hopefully clear this hex as well. And uh, even if I occupy just this hex, I've reestablished control if I can knock this guy away. So we're going to try to unravel that. And the second thing we're going to try to do is we're going to come down here to where the 21st tanks are. And this is a little more complicated, but essentially what I'm going to do is get a little risky here, and I'm going to pretty much abandon this position here and leave these units uh, on their own devices. That means they'll probably lose the airport, uh, and they'll have to go to emergency supply next turn, but um, I think they can hold out for a while. There's some good defense hexes, and meanwhile, I'm going to take these forces, and I'm going to come down and try to smash up the 21st tanks here and dull their ability to become a cut threat. The goal, hopefully, will be to eliminate both these cut threats, or at least neutralize them. That is the main goal for this attack, or for this activation, I should say. So let's go ahead and take care of this one, because it's probably the easiest in terms of where I want to move. So let's take this armor car. We're going to go uh, and, one and, uh, two and, three and, four and, five, uh, six and seven. <laughs> it took me a while to remember that I could actually do that. So many of these units were far away, it was tough to get the right movement patterns and paths together to get the right kind of effects I wanted. Pardon me. Okay, so now that we sort of neutralized that, I thought about bringing a unit that could attack him, but attacking across a stream, um, getting it's too risky. I don't want to lose the armored car here. Um, I thought about bringing this two guy over, but I need the attack points over here. So this stack is then going to go and one and two and three and and hold here. Um, and this stack is going to come and go and one and two and they're going to or three because it's going to be plus one of the zone of control. And they'll attack that stack there with a mobile attack. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see I made all these notes because I've been thinking about this turn for a couple. I did it this morning. I got up and looked at it and wrote some notes, and that's one of the nice things about plexiglass. I can write my notes and make my little scribbles. Make my scribbles. Okay. Take that guy. So this is going to be a, a mobile attack. 
let's go ahead and get our little pen out and do our calculation here. It's going to be 9 defense. We're attacking here with, um, we are going to be using this um, rocket unit. So it's 2, we're going to have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The rocket unit's automatically coordinated because it's right next to the attacking hex. So that's, what is that? It's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's 11. And the stack is, I believe, a 9, because I don't think we're going to need to use the, art the artillery yet. So 3, 6, 9, so yeah, that's 20. So 20 to 9. Um, it can't use artillery support, which we neutralized off camera. Uh, it has no reaction ability, and um, actually, wait, that's not necessarily true. This stack could react over there, but it won't really help, because it's still going to be 2 to 1, even if it brings its one defense over, so I think we'll just keep it there. Um, so, we can now think about there's no artillery to use, because uh, I already have my one coordinated automatically. So now we do air, air combat or coordination. Uh, the Soviets have a lot of air power to throw, and since they can throw, since they have their HQ there and they can coordinate, I think I'm going to have them throw a couple of units at this one. I think we'll throw two fives at it. So I remember you can use up to two guys. So they will bring that. Um, I think the Germans will use... Uh, they just have such limited air power options, and I don't really want to... I'm not going to use air. We'll see We'll see if the Soviets can pull off theirs. Um, they won't use any combat uh, or HQ points on this. Well, he does have one. He'll save it for his stack. He might need help later. So we'll roll two dice here. Okay, one plane makes it, one does not. Because that was a, with a plus one on mobile, that's a five. The other one does not, so we'll just say that one made it. And I didn't put any planes in, so now we know it's going to be a plus one due to uh, close air support. Okay, so we're attacking here. I know I get a combined arms bonus because I have armor and motorized uh, infantry there. So combined arms bonus. Um, my lead unit will be that motorized infantry. Um, actually, do I want to do that because I will lose the combined arms bonus. Uh, we'll make it this armored car. So that's a 2 minus 2 ER differential. And now we'll do combat coordination checks. I don't have any HQ points because I don't have any HQ over there to spend. So we're going to have to roll fairly low. All right, we got it. 4 plus 1 is 5, so we pass our combat coordination check. And there's no defensive terrain bonus he gets. He's just in the woods, and woods don't help with... Um, combat just with overruns and since I'm not I'm attacking from one hex from not from a stream uh, he doesn't get the stream defensive bonus either so the total we're gonna get here is minus two so we're gonna minus two on a two to one attack Ooh, almost hit some guys there I need to get like a tray or a tower that was a three so that actually is a very good attack a three minus two is one and that becomes on a two to one. Oh, attacker one, defender two, retreat. Great. <laughs> well, that's not exactly what I wanted, but uh, that kind of stinks. I lose my armor car there. That really kind of stinks. Man, Germans just not getting the kind of rolls they want here. Uh, defender two, retreat though, so that is good. Um, that means this guy takes a step loss, and he'll have this guy take a step loss. And he has to retreat now. He actually will... Wait. Because he's going to go here and here. Well, here, here is what we'll do. And I could advance with these units after combat and go here. Um, don't really want to. So yeah, we'll just do that, keep those guys there. And also note that these guys are under emergency supply. This is this guy. Uh, the one thing it was was an armor attrition result, so we can see if this plane dies, even though the armor attrition didn't qualify because they didn't have any red defense units or armor defending. Um, so let's see if their plane lives. The plane does not live, it is out. So that helps, that's, a, that's nice. Okay, so that was that combat. Uh, we did push them off the road, so we have temporarily succeeded at what we wanted to do. Uh, 
they're not going to activate again. So effectively, this roadblock is neutralized or this cut threat, as long as you keep this unit here, uh, because this guy is under control over there. Okay, so now we go to the far more complicated uh, battle over here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the same neutral neutralization idea. We're going to take a tank. It's going to be far riskier this time because we're taking a tank. And, and uh, this shows how desperate I'm getting because this is one of the few units that can get there. And it is essentially a floating VP if they kill it. But, you know, that's just sort of how it goes, right? So this guy goes and, and that's one for zone of control. So one and, two, three, four, five, six, because there's a zone of control here with a tank. So he's there. He's going to neutralize that artillery while we take. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to send this recon unit over here to bolster the defense of the stack. It's also going to take with it this uh, still good artillery unit. And then that would normally put you over stacking, but what we're going to do is we're going to take two of these tanks out. And what they're going to do is they're going to come with this stack that's actually going to go and one, two, three, uh, four. Wait, is that right? Yeah, it's and, I'm sorry, one and, <laughs> two, three, four and. Otherwise, I could do an overrun. That's why I was like, what? Okay. Then we take this guy's and go and one, two, three, four, five. And so they'll join that stack there. Meanwhile, the fired artillery units, okay. We're going to move these guys and I'm going to fix this emergency supply situation. They're going to go together. So it's going to be and one and uh, two and three and four. And these guys are going to be able to make it there too. And one, two, three, and they go there. So this tank and that guy, that guy, those guys are, all these guys are emergency supply. These guys are not. That guy is not emergency supply, and unfortunately it's artillery and um, recon unit of our under emergency supply, so we're going to have to find another token. One second. There we go. So they get buried. All right. So what do we got here? Let's see. We neutralized that. We've moved our guys there. We've noted who is under emergency supply. I've moved my artillery back here to a safer spot, I hope, uh, from all these attacks. And now we're going to come down here and we'll focus on this attack. So I declare my attack here. And because he has um, some red box units nearby, he can do a reaction move. And that's what he's going to try to do. So let's pull out our little sheet and make sure we do our reaction move correct. Okay, so we're not going to try to combat refuse. Um, see that you can only do this after combat refusals are resolved. Um, because remember, if you do a combat refusal and fail, then you can't do a no retreat or a reaction movement. So we're going to react. Um, it's a unit by unit basis, so we're going to roll for each one we want to do. And if you succeed, you get half your MA um, movement. And you can go anywhere, so I don't have to help out. I can actually maneuver my guys around or move other guys. Um, so we'll see what we do here. So you have to be within two hexes of a defender hex, and it has to be red box MA, and you can't be disrupted out of supply or on low fuel, uh, which they don't use fuel in uh, this scenario, so that's fine. Uh, you have to be the same formation as the unit in the defender hex, and Soviet units cannot be in an enemy zone of control. Uh, Germans can, and HQs cannot do reaction movement, and uh, you can be eligible for multiple reaction movements in a turn. So you can kind of chain them around if you keep getting attacked. Uh, that's very interesting to note. It doesn't always happen because often the Soviets, if they're in an, in an enemy zone of control, they can't move. So um, what that means is this tank can't react because it's in an enemy zone of control. These guys can. And so we're going to try to roll two of those. we got to do a ER check. So we'll do the first, the motorized. It passes. And the other guy passes too, so they both get to come in. I was kind of hoping they would fail. Um, and what they're doing is they're going to come in here and help their buddy out. So suddenly we're attacking a 10 stack. 
Um, so now we do the rest of the combat. Uh, it's a declared mobile attack there. So let's do our little calculations. I got going to use my scrawling hand because there's units everywhere. So he has 10 defense. We're attacking with 3, 5, um, 8. Oh, that's right, so it's uh, 18. Um, because it's, he moved those guys in, we're going to have to use this artillery unit that I sort of spirited away uh, over here in Solsi. Um, so he can't use his artillery unit because I've got I've pinned it down. This guy is free to, to use his artillery fire, and he's at the bottom of the stack, isn't he? Yeah. So we're going to turn him over and try to use that. I, uh, I will spend command points on this. Spent two command points um, to try to get that. So it's a six uh, with a plus one on mobile. Uh, he is not in a forest or anything, so he's good. Um, minus two and a plus one, so it's a minus one overall. Rolling. Total fail, but not a whiff because of the minus one. So uh, you only get half of that, so that was just a three, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's just a one. I get one more, but that is not enough. Damn. <laughs> oh, well. It's good enough for a three to two attack. Uh, so, okay, we got three to two. Now we can do uh, close air support. Again, the Soviets, since they have so much air, uh, I think they're going to utilize just one this time. Um, actually, he can't bring, bring in close air support because he doesn't have an HQ. That's a good, good catch. Okay, so another unfortunate uh, memory stoppage. The video just sort of stopped. Luckily, I caught myself. I didn't just ramble on for like three or four minutes. I actually caught myself about 30 seconds after it stopped. So unfortunate because we were making good progress on that attack. Uh, but, you know, just a minor hiccup. It happens. Um, so let's resume what we were doing. Uh, what I didn't get to was the fact was that the Germans were going to bring in this uh, uh, Junker 88 unit for close air support, as you can recall, the just as I got cut off, I mentioned that the Soviets could not use close air support because they didn't have an HQ. I almost gave it to him, but then I was like, good catch, then the video ended. So now we're on this part. Okay, so the Germans are going to try to get this close air support in. It's minus one because of being a mobile turn. Uh, there's no other modifiers to go for it because I have no command points to spend, and there's no negative modifiers based on being in woods or anything. So let's roll the die. Just made it. Four plus one is five, so we got it. So we'll keep him around. We'll go ahead and start tallying up. Uh, we'll put him over here. Start tallying up our little uh, modifiers here. So we get minus one for uh, close air support. Let's see. We are attacking with armor. Do we get combined arm bonus? Yes, we do. So we get a minus one combined arm bonus. Uh, the defensive terrain for this text, he gets plus one for being a village. So, plus one uh, village. And we don't have to do a combat coordination because we're only attacking from one hex and everybody is in the same formation, so we automatically pass. Uh, that renders this to be a minus one to the roll total. Write that down there. There we go. All right, so with a minus one, I have done, there's no other artillery. I'm just double checking because this turn is now coming several hours after I recorded the first part. So I'm making sure I did everything right. Uh, no artillery, none of that stuff. We did all those. Okay, yeah, we're gonna roll. Oh, it interrupts the line of action there. This is why I need to get a tower or like a little tray. Probably more of the tray route. All right, so we have a five, it's minus one. This is a three to two attack. Let's see how we did here. Maybe that's not what we want. All right, a three to two with a five is defender retreat with a red armor result. Uh, with an armor attrition result. And I think that might qualify. Let me double check. Let's see. 
if the attacking force has armor steps and the defender has armor or red defense value and the defender did have armor. Dang, this is so rough. The Germans have just been getting really roughed up by this result. So it's a defender retreat uh, with an armor attrition and you have to lose a step um, even if it doesn't cause a step loss, if I remember right. Um, actually, I'm going to look that up just real quick. I'm almost positive that's how it is because it's such a bum rule that you're like, really, is that how it goes? But it almost kind of makes sense. I mean, it, it's really just to make the Germans pay for some of these low odds attacks they do. If the CRT does not require an attacker step loss, one attacking armor unit step is still lost. Oh, that is, that is bum city. So this guy goes down one. They gain a victory point. So we're now down to nine. <laughs> just not really getting well. Man, th this unit, this reaction moves, they've just done well. I mean, it really shows you how this combat system is unpredictable. I mean, we were making a low odds attack. We got a decent roll, um, but it wasn't great. But even on that low odds attack I made earlier, I mean, it was two to one, but I got like a one. I still lost a step. And, and that sometimes can be frustrating, but it's also what makes this system a lot of fun, to be honest. It's like, I'm having fun with this. I've just lost an armored step. Like, come on, this, the Germans have been having some good attacks and this is the great friction that comes in. And so you see what happens. Um, so now they have to retreat. So they do have to retreat two hexes. It was a mobile attack. Hmm, and we're gonna have to check for a loss of this plane. That's gonna be a pain. All right, so let's go. One, two, well, I could go here. Let's go here to Grebnia. Nah, stay close to our forces. We'll go there. We'll see in that hex. All right, let's see if this plane survives. It does not. It bites the dust. Boom. I mean, and that's really, uh, I think I mentioned it before in my intro, but that's a really elegant way to handle air combat and losses from air combat is, air, is armor attrition triggering that. It also occurs with leaders. If we had a leader in that battle, we could have checked to see if the leader died. Um, that did not work. Oh, I had an HQ there. Hmm, I don't think I could have used it for anything. Um, ah, bummer. Okay, so I can advance after air combat. I can go two hexes, and I think I will, because my goal, remember, is to try to neutralize this threat. Unfortunately, I didn't get any step losses. So, you know, we'll keep pressing our attack here. Oh, is this just playing into the hands of them, though? Maybe I just go here. Ah, oh, I don't want them to get their chit and then attack me because they're still fairly strong. I mean, they're really strong, to be quite honest. I kind of was hoping to do some damage there, but that did not work out that way. Okay, well, we'll just go there. We won't take our two and get our plus one. I don't want to be totally enveloped by them. I do want them to try to bring it a little bit if they can. Okay, so that was eight Panzer. Our first attack went well. The second one, you know, could have been a lot better. But you know, this is what happens. We're getting pushed against the wall. All right, and the next unit up is... 237. So that is our friends up here in the north. Right up there. They lost their comrades over there. So we're gonna have to reorganize our defense here, but still looking pretty good. Maybe try to build a strong point. I don't know. Uh, I guess I could try to do this turn. No, let me think about it. It's always smart to think about it. So let me think about it and I'll come back and we'll do that turn. So I think for the 237th, the most important thing to do is to pull the artillery back a little bit and create a two hex dip depth line. I want to put some defensive units here and then another line of defensive units here and then move the artillery back here. I thought about maybe putting a unit here or there's another town down here which we can't see off camera. Let's see if I can just get it in there. Yeah. I thought about putting guys here, just kind of do that, but <coughs> pardon me. The German still could kind of shoot through. I mean, it'd be difficult for them, and they'd probably use all their movement. And it might just be better to have a strong thing here. But I have this strong point, which you can't see off camera down there. I'm not terribly worried about it. Um, the main thing I'm worried about is busting through to Utrecht. So I think what I'm going to do is just create that two-depth defense line, and that way 
Uh, I mean, I could put a guy here, but then they could just kind of sneak up here and try to get around. I mean, it's all very difficult, but you just can't trust the Germans. And I'd rather have a line here, so in case they push this hex back, there's another strong line right behind it. Um, you know, we'll see if that really holds out. So let's take these artillery units, and they're actually going to go back a couple of spaces. So they're going to go and one... And they're going to go here, so they're still within command range of the HQ, so that's one, two, three, four hexes away. Um, oops, I'm knocking guys over everywhere. So this guy's going to come back. So we got three, uh, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we're going to take this engineering unit back. He's going to hang back here. We're going to keep these guys there. That's three, six, seven, eight. Uh, we're going to take the full strength guy out of here. And he's going to go, you know, up to there. He can make it easily. So that's all the units you can stack there. I have full stacking three, six, seven, eight there. Um, that's sort of weak, and I don't want to just leave him hanging because, I mean, uh, he's obviously, I don't really care about third tanks. Like, third tanks is just kind of done. They've been done for a while. Um, maybe he can go help guard the artillery, right? There's two, there's only four artillery there. That's what he'll do. Oh, wait. I forgot these were, I was going to do an assault turn because I'm going to build a strong point here. So these guys could all switch. That means these guys only had two movements. That's and one and two. So they, they can still make it there. Everybody's got half movement, so, uh, and one, and, so yeah, or, uh, and one, and two. So this is far as back as he can be. That's okay. Everybody else is good to go. And the way that turn should have worked is I should have started building the strong point first, and then you can move guys. Uh, that way you can't just move guys and then build your strong point, because that's sort of, um, that'd be way too easy to take advantage of that. Okay, so because I let uh, that guy there and he qualifies to build, he's going to start building this. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Germans are going to attack. And actually, how many command points does my HQ have? Just one. Okay, so you can only build one strong point a turn. Uh, the engineer can build one on his own, but since I moved him, he can't build one. Um, and I'd rather move him back and get more defensive points than just keep him there. So build that strong point there. Uh, they're probably going to attack it, but you know at least they've got to now. If they don't, then that becomes completed on the next turn. So something to think about for the eighth or, or the third motorized, which is hang out over here now. So speaking of the third motorized, let's see who comes up next for the Soviets or I mean, the Germans. Uh, it is our friends the third motorized. So let's see what we want to cook up for the third motorized and how they're going to assault uh, Utrigorsh again now that they finally dealt with that rear threat of those units. See how they're going to move down here and try to bring the third motorized pain, so to speak. Third motorized. Once again, I am going to be put in a situation where just being out of range is not going to allow me to have the most efficient attack I want. And the goal right now is to actually attack the uh, Utrigorsh. Not only is it the VP Hex, of course, that we've been driving towards, but now there's the added pressure of the fact that the 237 has started building a strong point there. If they complete that strong point uh, at the end of the turn, then we can't use mobile combat on that Hex. We can only use assault combat. And uh, that will definitely hurt uh, us. We're already weakened. Or the third motorized already weakened, so it's kind of getting to the desperation gamble time. Because the other thing is, if I can break through, which is not looking likely at all, if I could somehow cause a muck around here, I mean, this is not a really huge defensive stack unit there, the 202. Uh, the rear would be totally open because the 70th is uh, engaged down here. So the benefit, if I could somehow pull off like a magic maneuver, uh, would be great to be able to come over here and just sort of. Uh, take out that hex and then just sort of blow through the rear. But even then, you gotta stick to the road because of all this marsh. There's some trails. I mean, it's not it's not really ideal. It's not ideal for just uh, storming through and really taking advantage of movement. But again, the primary concern is I have to attack that hex because it, if it finishes that strong point, then we're definitely going to be in a big pickle. It's going to be a lot harder to take. 
The problem, of course, as I alluded to in the beginning, is that I can't get everybody uh, into the battle like I want. So this is sort of a wide shot, and we'll, as we move, we'll get closer on the battle. Uh, this stack, my very uh, potent armor. This is a great stack, but unfortunately it's just too far away to attack this uh, hex over here, because the most it can go is like one, two, and then it's on a trail, and three, and four, and five. And maybe five and, but they can't go there because of the one uh, movement cost for in, in, ah, enemy zone of control. So close, but ultimately just far enough away to be really annoying because it is my good stack of units. Instead, I'll have to be using uh, this weakened stack of three infantry. I'm still gonna be able to get the mobile attack because I get my armored cars in. What I'm gonna do is form sort of a motorized inf motorcycle of infantry um, and a recon and, motor and an armored car. And uh, that'll, let me, that'll allow me to do a mobile attack on the Utra Borshex. But again, this is going to be kind of uh, low odds. I think if they get their defensive artillery in, it could be a one to one combat. Um, so, yeah, this could be really ugly for the Germans. Hopefully, they just roll well and uh, can do something. And, and, but the main thing is if I attack, the build marker goes away. So, I guess I've not really alluded to that. That's the reason I want to attack, because I need that build marker to not uh, be flipped to the completed side. So let's go ahead and start moving people over, and then we can zoom in a little bit more on what's actually going on. Uh, so this is our main stack. I think he's just going to go and one there. He's just going to take that position right there. And one, and yep. Kind of wondering though. Hmm. I'm thinking overrun potential. So maybe it's just better to go here. Well, he can make it. And then we'll take our little motorcycle infantry. We go one and two and three and four and five, six. And we'll also take that. Yeah, we'll take these two guys too. The armor car is the one we really need. The recon is just a really nice unit. It's a two, but you know. Uh, so it's and one and two and three and four and five and. And the armor car can make it there as well. Um, could maybe get, could I get this guy around? Nah, it wouldn't be worth it because then if I bring so I have this armored car off camera, and I'm thinking could I bring him into the battle? But if I bring him into the battle, he'd have to be in the third attacking hex, and that would give me a much more difficult combat coordination roll. Uh, it adds like a plus two or three modifier. It's not good. So I think uh, we're not going to worry about that. Um, next, we'll move into the guys that can't quite make it. <laughs> they're going to come in. I think they're going to go. Off camera, they're coming in though. It'll be one, two, and three, and four, and five. Hmm. Let's go six here. Let's get them there because that way we're out of activations for them this turn, but next turn, you know, you can kind of spring across and do some, uh, hopefully, maybe some overrunning uh, and just. Another way to maybe get around this hex in case it gets more fortified, so we'll just sort of do that. And then we'll bring our artillery in. Actually, what we need to do is keep them safe. Keep them secret. Keep them safe. Um, I'm not so worried about this stack. Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. I'm not so worried about that hex there, like making a sortie and guys coming out, because that's still part of the defunct third tanks that hasn't had an activation forever. And it's got that one 237 unit, but the 237 has already gone. So I'm not too worried about that hex, really. It is annoying that it's there. Uh, if it were more, if it were well defended or had more capable units, they could actually go to the south and try to be a cut threat for the force around Solsi, but they're not. Okay, so let's take these guys. So I guess what that means is I talk, I said all that, and what I'm trying really try, what I'm trying to link together is I'm trying to find a place to put my artillery, and this is just a huge stack of it, and uh, I want to keep it safe. So I think what we're going to do is just go and one and, uh, right, is that right? And one and uh, two and. And that way we can get back on the road, but we'll also bring these guys uh, right there. They can make it, right? Yeah. It's not a huge defensive presence there, but it's enough to screen, sort of. <laughs> it's enough to be enough. Okay, so... Let's think about this attack here and uh, calculating all the fun things that are going to happen here. I'm trying to get a good camera angle. There we go. That might be the best. Switch your map. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, perfect. That'd be kind of tough to write, but uh, we'll go over it nonetheless. So what we're going to do is do a mobile attack from this two hexes to there. This unit can um, has nobody that can combat react because nobody's got red box movement for them. Uh, there's nobody. They can uh, do a no retreat and actually will do that because they um, would rather take losses instead of giving up this victory point hex because guys are coming up the line and so they're willing to take a step loss. This could be their undoing, but you know, usually it's very helpful. And being able to do a no retreat is actually usually super super helpful. And that's automatically going to succeed because his HQ is in the hex and he has three steps. So we know he's automatically going to get that. So he gets the no retreat. Um, what else do we have to think about? Uh, I think that's all the reaction-y kind of things we can do. So then we think about close air support. And yeah, we're going to use close air support. The Germans are going to bring in... Whew, it's hard. Their, their power is so ridiculous. They just don't have much of it. The Soviets are going to throw in two. I'm going to throw in two uh, fours on this. And then I think the Germans can only allot one unit, and it has to be a four, and they're going to try to get lucky. So let's roll for the Soviet units. Let's see if they get their um, flight. It's plus one for being a uh, mobile turn. Is this going to be difficult? Nope, they don't get it. And the Germans now are going to roll for their plane. Also going to be very difficult to get, because we're not going to spend... Uh, oh, I guess I have so many effing command points. Um, no, we're going to save that for the combat coordination roll or artillery. We're going to need that way more than anything else. So we'll roll for this plane. Nope, does not get it. Okay, so at least they didn't get any of their air either, but they just have so much more to throw at every combat that matters. Okay, so we did that. Uh, now we're going to do artillery. The defender will declare their artillery first, and he will use... Uh, let's see if I can get that. There we go. He will use both these units, and that is a very powerful amount of artillery. That's 10 points potentially coming at him. And the HQ will use uh, its command point on this roll. Should be using the tweezers here, but sometimes I get really handsy. Because these counters are kind of big. It's nice. I like the size of these counters because you can't get them. You can kind of pick them up and manipulate them fairly easily. Um, okay, so we put that once. Let's do that roll for their artillery. They I believe their ER is five. Yeah. So because it's a plus one for being mobile, but minus one for the command point, they just need to roll a five or less. And they roll a two, so they get it. Boo. Uh, Germans, of course, will now have to commit uh, everything they've got as well. It remains. They can only use two, actually, right? Because, yeah, so they'll take the... Uh, I guess the four and the three will go. Yeah. And so that is a six. Um, hmm, we won't spend points on this either. It's probably gonna, that might be a bad decision, but I'm just gonna go with it because I need the combat coordination roll to go well. I don't need that would be a really bad modifier to lose here. Um, Okay, so we're going to try to go for this artillery. We need to roll at five, basically, because we had a, minor, or a plus one to our roll for mobile. All right, we got it. Rolled a two. Okay, so let's start putting these numbers down. Let's figure this out. So I calculated the stack earlier off camera, and it's 11, so they got 10, so that becomes a 21. So let's go ahead and shift back over here so I can write a little bit. Okay. So we got 21 defense points, and we're attacking. Well, we just threw in seven artillery, we know. So we got that. And uh, let's see. The sack is a 12, if I remember right, because it says three fours. Yeah, it's 12. So it's two, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's 21 total. Those two stacks plus seven is 28. So basically, it's going to be one to one. Uh, we're not even good enough to get three to two. We would need a lot more. I think we'd need like three or four more. Maybe not a lot more, but we can't get three to two. So it's going to be one-to-one -one combat. Uh, if we look at the modifiers, we need to do a combat coordination check for our guys. Our lead unit is going to be a motorcycle infantry, a seven. So let's go ahead and roll that, and uh, we will use our command points on this. So the overall modifier is minus one. Ugh, failed. 
Roll a 10. Damn, that's just the one thing I did not need. <laughs> and of course, it's the one thing you spend points on, and that's what happens. Okay, so let's uh, just get a little bit more room to get the modifiers on here. Just so we remind ourselves. So it's going to be plus two for a failed combat coordination. Oh, that's so lame. Uh, it's going to be plus one for a village, plus one for no retreat. Uh, my ER differential is going to be minus two. And I will be getting a combined arms bonus. Wait, oh, no, I won't. Because I don't have, I don't actually have armor attacking because it's in that stack. Damn. Okay. Well, that would have been really helpful. So this is a plus two overall to the roll. Rough. All right, one-to-one -one level combat, plus two to the roll. Damn, a seven. This is not going to be good. A seven becomes, with a plus two, becomes a nine. That is attacker retreat. So we could have almost lost something, but we're just going to have to retreat instead. Um, not great. Kind of wanted to have them lose something, but they did lose this marker because they got attacked. Uh, I don't think that really matters. Now we got to retreat two hexes. These guys will go one. One, two, yeah. And this motorized unit will go back. One, two. Hang up there. Oh, where are my tweezers? I should just be using tweezers. Okay. Oops, you probably didn't see hardly any of that. I'm so sorry. Alright, so the main effect is that they had to retreat, so that armored card group went here and the motorized guys came up here. Uh, I mean, it could have been worse. They could have lost uh, steps. So, you know. Not the best, but if I had one more activation, I could have them now, you know, because they spent their artillery. But next turn, they're going to get their artillery back, and we're going to be back in the same kind of boat. Uh, so, yeah, you know, that's just the fortunes of uh, war, right? Okay, so that was the third motorized attempt to take Utragorsh, not doing so well. Uh, let's see who's going to come up with the Soviets. The 202. So the 202 is pretty much just, there's this unit in Volot, right? Um, he can build strong point, I guess. Um, but mainly it's these guys up here, this sort of uh, force. So let's actually think about what we want to do with them, because it's pretty easy. I don't think we're going to need to really concentrate too hard on what this, this force is going to have to do. So really what it is, is it's just an anti-tank, an armored car, motor, motorcycle, motorcycle, motorcycle. Fast response forces. Um, Capable of still plugging holes and doing what they need to do. I just don't know. We should be thinking about what could the Germans do on their turn, right? What could they be coming around here with? There's a lot of room there for them to do that. Oh, let's pull this camera angle back out. There we go. Um, hmm. More would be a good place. I'm less worried about them blowing through Utragorsh now. I mean, I think it's just going to be very tough for them to do. I think they can maybe do it next turn or flank it. So we need to be thinking... What is a good place to defend? This city's not bad, and we could just hole up here. I don't know if they can build a strong point. I'd have to look that up. Um, let's see, of course, the rules are buried. I forget if motorcycle can build or not. Oh, wait, it's in the it just tells me. I don't know. Was I thinking of something else? I don't know. So motorcycle infantry actually cannot build a strong point. It's bicycle infantry, which I think there's only one in the other game that can do that. So they can't even build a strong point. So I think their best best move is going to be able to be sort of this reaction force, right? Um, Leave the anti-tank somewhere. It doesn't really need it. It's a one unit. It's nice. It's a nice stacker. So I could put it with these guys. Yes, yeah, that's what I'll do. We'll go and one and two and three and and he'll come join this stack because he can fit with them. That leaves these guys as a highly capable mobile force. I think what we'll actually do is. We 
we'll make them sort of the overrun proof guys. What they're going to do is they're going to go and one and two, three, four, five. And we'll put them there. That'll be sort of an effective deterrent, I think. I mean, the third tank's unit there is probably going to be screwed. Like, there's just nothing I can really do to save that third tank's unit. Um, it could react, though. I mean, it's possible. It's got four ER. But if they try to run through here, they're going to have to also overrun that hex because it has a zone of control. So that will limit the ability for them to just, like, you know, overrun and then come up here and overrun and attack. So, you know, it's a little more defense in depth, I guess. So, yeah, that works for me. I'm happy with that. All right, so Germans. So we only, only got the 8th Panzer or the SS units down here. It's the 8th Panzer. All right. So this is going to require some thought. I'm going to have to turn it off, but I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Uh, what my current issues are with the Eighth Panzer. Main issues include: <laughs> What do I do with these stacks? I don't want to just leave them out necessarily. Some of these guys are out of supply. Yeah, these guys are about to go out of supply. If I don't get them somewhere they can be in supply. Uh, currently, I have supply. Like, I would, if it was checked now, I'd have it. But, of course, the 180th has not moved, and the 180th is the biggest threat. Uh, and I have the least amount of forces to deal with it. So the question is, do I just, having blunted now the 21st tanks move here, should I pull back with my Panzer units here and either try to form, like, a triad defense group up here? Because if I hold this um, uh, air airplane hex, then I can, two hexes a turn can be given supply. So you can sort of cycle through. It won't be really efficient, but you can really cycle through and get three hexes generally in supply. One, one, one stack will always be an emergency supply. Um, so I could try to do that and just be the holdout guy and just try to win points that way and acknowledge that I'm not going to be able to win the cut threat war yet. Um, or I try to pull the forces back and try to blunt one of these offensives. It's not going to be the 180th because I can't get there that fast. Uh, I could get pretty close, but not that close. I probably still want to deal with this. Or I just further take on the 21st tanks. So a lot to think about. I'm going to take a break, and when we come back, it'll be the 8th Panzer. Scribblings of a mad tactician. Thinking of how to do the 8th Panzer's turn has taken me, oh man, a couple of days now this turn. Filming this turn has taken longer than I uh, wanted to, but at the same time, this has been really fun because this is the this is the fun part. It's trying to get out of the puzzle or the, the news. It's not really a puzzle. It's just trying to get out of the news, I should say, uh, and not being trapped by Soviet units. So it's, it's involved a lot of trying to say, what do I want to do? What kind of priorities do I have? Uh, and here you can see how I've scribbled out by the lone unit in Volot. Uh, some plans I have here that relate to what can I do with these units in the 21st tanks? Should I be executing overruns and attacks, or should I retreat to the airfield, or should I try to go to the west and help with the 180th threat? And I think what I've decided after looking at the west, which I'm about to show you, is I think I'm going to go with plan one. I think I'm going to try to overrun an attack and try to just break up the 21st tanks as best I can. I'm going to double check the numbers in just a second, but I think that's the plan I want to do. Uh, I might be sacrificing defending the airfield and thus compromising the Solzi position, but I think in return, I think I'm going to be able to hold off the cut threats and keep everybody in supply, or at least all these units uh, maybe west of Solzi in supply. So let's first take a look at the west and try to understand the unique problem here and some of the advantages and problems we have. Let's get a good angle. Okay, that's kind of cockeyed. There we go. Problem, 180th. And the fact that it also has the potential through use of trails and the fact that it doesn't cost any movement for leg units to move through forest, uh, the ability to project is under control over quite a distance very easily, even with just four movement. So the question becomes, how do you contain this many units? And these are these are fairly powerful stacks. I mean, this is a four, that's a five, three, you know, and that's a five, four. So offensively, I mean, that's 14, plus it has the recon unit, so it's 15. 
It's 15 attack points. There's nothing to sneeze at, especially with the fact that I have such reduced uh, capability here on the west, uh, the western portion of the map. So the question becomes, how do you stop a force that is not necessarily overwhelming, but can definitely cut the road, and if it does so one more time, is going to put a lot of your units in a very bad position uh, going forward. And the idea is maybe, let's get aggressive. We're going to have to get aggressive, because there's no way to really contain all the threats along the road unless somehow we can interdict the way the units down here can move. Because the advantage is, we know, is that the, uh, what is this, the 183rd? The 183rd isn't going to move because it doesn't have an activation marker, and the activate any formation marker has already come out. So as long as we leave a unit here that projects a zone of control, it can keep this stack from interdicting supply there. Uh, I tried to figure out a way to get this armored car up here. There's just not a way with movement and zone of control. I, I can't get there. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to be behind a tank here in this stack. And then I'm going to have to take this stack with just a tank and a motorcycle infantry. And then uh, two tanks from here, which is probably going to be this 3-3 and maybe another. Oh, yeah, it's just nothing really there. Yeah, 3-3 three, 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 and 3-2. And I'll probably take that artillery as well if I can. And the plan is to come down here, and I'm going to come to these two hexes. Um, let's get a little closer and take a look at that. Now, why are those two hexes? Well, nice catch. The main reason I picked those two hexes is because they're both cities or villages, so I get the defensive bonus for being there, and I'm going to have pretty low defensive numbers. I think one stack, they're both going to have basically five defense. Uh, that's not great. So I think either I'll put them either here, I've thought about putting them side by side, but the idea is to use their zone of control ability to sort of stop uh, the movement. Because remember, these guys are leg infantry, so the moment they hit a zone of control, they have to stop uh, moving. If I come down here and put the pressure on this unit, it can't go anywhere. That leaves only this unit free to swing about and try to cut the roads. And if you put another unit here, then this unit can just sort of slip up here and go through there because it takes two movement to go into a marsh, so it'd be like one, two, three, and they'd have to stop. Uh, so you either have to put a unit here or here to keep it from going there. And if you put a unit here, it can't really go this way. The only thing it could do is it could kind of come along here and even get to this road or block this area. I need to kind of double check on that. I'm pretty sure this is the only way it can get is to cut these hexes. Um, so that's where we're going to hopefully get the, hopefully we'll get an advantageous draw because the only thing we have left for the Germans is the SS division or the formation, the SS one, the Totenkamp. Uh, so hopefully we can get them. They're not very strong, but again, they can keep the road from being cut. If it works, um, that'll be great. <laughs> it will face a counterattack and we'll have to see what happens. It will have to be an assault because the Soviet units had no mobile attack capability in the 180th. That's one advantage. I'll probably have slightly higher ER ratings if I'm using my good tanks. But then again, it could be three to one odds. It could be even worse. They can gang up on you. So that's sort of the plan of attack for the 8th Panzer. And the thing is, I'm just going to leave these units here. I'm just going to chill. They're just going to hang out in Sultzy. They're probably going to get surrounded. Uh, I think the 70th will make getting the airfield a priority. And they'll get surrounded for a turn or two, but they will have already been supplied, so they can hang out for at least a turn. And if everything goes according to plan, or if we do pretty well down here, I can smash the 21st tanks. Uh, these guys we can deal with next turn, kind of kick the can down the road. Uh, but then we're going to try to also stymie the ability of the 180th. And if this does work, then I think I can take the forces here, plus what I get from the SS here. And uh, next turn we can sort of mop that up with those. And just try to keep holding on, because the goal is to hold Soltsy. And if we can hold it for two more turns, which could happen with a supply, we could do that pretty safely. Uh, we get three victory points, and that can be the difference between losing and winning this scenario, especially with our armor losses. So I think I'm going to try to do the whole Soltsy <laughs> thing, with, but also trying to fend off all the cuts. So that's been the hard part, using limited forces to fend these off. So I've rambled on enough about the turn. Um, so I'm going to pause, and then I'm going to come back, and we're actually going to do these attacks. I'm probably starting with this one, because it's sort of the key one. Uh, I didn't really explain this. This is the, the when I was like, I'm doing plan one, and then I basically explained why I did plan one without saying what plan one was. The plan for this deck is to take come over here and overrun uh, this artillery and tank, mainly so I can take out the artillery, hopefully. Um, if I 
do that, then I can go over and attack this stack, and I might try to swing this tank around to help out with that attack, or this tank might retreat. I have to look at it again, because uh, I made this plan last night. This is, and so that was, uh, I wrote down some of the details, about the, not the particulars. That makes no sense, right? Well, you know how it is. So anyway, that's the plan here, is to take that out and then attack here and just drive it further back, and that will blunt the 21st tank's total ability to cut the road at all. It might also leave these guys out of supply. <laughs> that could be devastating. Uh, not necessarily so. If I crush this position, they'll have, they'll have the ability to limp back here and, and get back into supply fairly easily. Um, so we're going to have to weigh the options there. But I just don't see the value in taking the stack and like bringing it back and trying to do something. I could go up to the airfield, but if I go up there, then I'm just giving the 21st tanks a free ability to move up again, and I really haven't done anything to damage their ability to cut. Here I can at least hopefully, in the best situation, take this out, that stack, completely wipe out their artillery support and a tank unit and get a VP, and then come down here and hopefully damage them or knock them back, and and, uh, and that just blunt their overall offensive uh, ability. Okay, so that's enough talking. I'm going to take a break, and when I come back, the 8th Panzer attacks. So after all that talk of doing overruns and attacking the 21st tanks, I started thinking about the calculations and what I could accomplish and the odds, and it just didn't seem like it was going to be really worth it. I would be able to overrun this stack, but it could use, because there's a tank there, um, uh, this artillery unit could use its support strength uh, because it's being attacked. It's only one unit that can do that in overrun. Normally you can't use artillery support, but one unit in the hex being overrun can use its uh, firing support side. So I mean, I would only get a 2 to 1 odds here. And then I would be able to attack this, but I have to bring a tank out of this stack and use this tank to come over here just to get 2 to 1 attack on that. Uh, the chances I would damage it are pretty low, uh, something like 20-30%. Uh, most of the time I would just push it back, and then about 30% of the time I would suffer losses just to push it back. And by pushing it back, it would still remain in supply even if I knocked it way down here. The chances I would actually damage any of the stuff is fairly low. Uh, I might be able to throw things in disruption, just not really worth it. And my units would be out of supply. And there's some pretty powerful units in this stack. Uh, that motorized infantry. So it almost seems like a shame. I, I could get some good, you know, if things go really my way, it would be a great attack. I would look like a genius, but I would also be hurting because at best I could do a step loss, maybe two if I'm really lucky, uh, but I would be out of supply next turn and then they would have to limp back and it would be tough for them. So I've changed my mind. Changed my mind. Said I'm going to go up to the airport and we're going to reinforce the airport hex. So what we're going to do is we're going to just retreat. Actually, the big one's too big. All right, so six points. It's really easy. It's like, and uh, one, two, three, and four. So now we kind of have a more formidable line. We have the airport hex, and uh, this guy's going to return back to this, this stack. He's going to jump on top of the HQ, actually. Um, because here's the thing. The 21st tanks, yeah, they can still now run up and cut the road, but they're just going to be able to cut the road for those units. And if I hold the airport hex, then I'm less worried overall about losing supply for a great many units. So it's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of shitty tracking all this, especially because I'm not using the force markers, which by the way, uh, you're watching this, you're like, "Man, these counter stacks get really high." Uh, you get force markers. I'm just not using them for the sake of solo play to be clear for everything on the board. I don't want to keep referring to where you stack it, but if you're playing by yourself or with an opponent, the force stacks simplify your biggest uh, uh, counter stacks pretty easily. So uh, that's a side note. Anyway, so that's going to be what we did there, all that talk, and we're moving there. So now we come to here, and we start thinking, well, what are we going to do? I looked at this artillery. They're pretty safe. That guy's in a village. I could probably even move him down one, so I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of keep this guy. See, one, two, three, four. Yeah. I'll move this guy up here, because he can hang out with that stack and be safe. Oh, one thing I... Well, no, I'm not going to do the HQ shuffle there. I don't, I was, when I was contemplating all these attacks, I was going to move an HQ and the leader down here, but that's not going to work anymore. Um, okay, this side. So now we go back to our original plan of trying to keep the 180th out. Uh, still pretty risky and daring. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... This guy, we'll move him first. He'll go and uh, one and two... and three, and four, and he's going to hide out there. Um, we're going 
going to keep one tank there just to project the zone of control to keep the supply line open and then the rest of the guys are going to go and one and two and three and it's three and oh sorry three and uh yeah they're going to go across here can they do that three and i don't think so what do i have to go in there three and how's i going to get there Oh, they probably had to go down here. Sorry, did you get that? Yeah, that's that was the furthest they could go. So I guess they had to go there, and then we're gonna take this stack that actually is just what are you? Oh yeah, and a fired artillery. Um, the fired artillery is just gonna go hang out with his compatriot over there. It's gonna be and one and two and three and so yeah, he'll hang out there. And we'll take this tank and motorcycle infantry and go and one and two and that's what it was. It was two and because then these guys can jump here because that's uh, two to go in the space plus one to go across the stream. So it takes three movements. So he has two and that takes all of his movement and he goes there. So yes, uh, something's probably going to get smashed. When the 180th comes in, uh, I could have maybe gone here, but I wanted to get village defense hexes for both of these guys. And if I just left a unit here, uh, he would just gang up on that unit, you know. So, yeah, he's going to gang up on this unit, and that's going to happen. I also have this armored car, which I'm going to release from the artillery unit because I don't, um, you know, he may be able to jet back over and do that. But right now I'm, I'm more concerned with the 180th attacking, so I'm going to bring this armored car over. Unfortunately, it can only make it to this hex, so that is... And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, he's gonna hang out there underneath. Yeah, so that's actually the more formidable sex. That's what, six, and this guy is just five. So you know, not great odds, but I also have that artillery unit there. So hopefully whatever they decide to attack, I'll be able to get I hope artillery coordination, <laughs> hopefully something. So at least two points, maybe five uh, to help out. So that should be good for the defense there. Okay, so that was the eighth Panzer's turn. So now we're kind of getting to the end of this turn. So let's see who's coming up for the Soviets. When you know it's our friends, the 180th. So I'm gonna take a look down here and we're gonna see if our plans really do hold up to Soviet scrutiny of how they're going to move their troops when I come back, the 180th. So with this sort of aggressive maneuver by the 8th Panzer, the 180th is effectively hemmed in and, and will not have the ability to really cut any road. Uh, I don't know why I thought they could get over here and thus I would need to guard that hex because uh, this is the only unit that could do so without having to really be inefficient because this guy would have to come down here and then go out because of zone of control. This guy could go like and, that'd be one and, two and, three and, but he couldn't go here and he couldn't go there and he couldn't go there. And I thought he was gonna be able to go here or here and that's just not gonna work. And also I was being dumb, there's supply here and there's another supply point just off map up there. So really, uh, it's just these hexes I need to really worry about, you know? Uh, and essentially that hex, because there's supply up here and it feeds out that way. So I don't know why I was so worried. That was me kind of over under thinking something, probably a little bit of both. Regardless though, this attack is gonna go down. They are gonna to try to launch an offensive. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna take the stack and just go one up here, because that's the most they can move. These guys will come up. And I think we'll just keep these guys here, because they're still in range. And if these guys get pushed back on their attack, then uh, I won't be violating stacking or leaving this group vulnerable. I mean, I, it would be nice being a city. I guess I could move them over to this one. Yeah, we'll just move them there. And they can still provide fire support. It's got five range there. Um, okay, so they are going to attack. I can... Uh, 
I don't know. Can I do combat? Could they react? Let's see if I could do reaction movement with those guys. Connect only after a respawn. Within two hexes of the defender's hex, they are within two. Their red box are not disrupted. Same. They're in the same formation. German units can be an enemy zone of control. And you can be eligible for multiple reaction moves. So the thing is, he's going to bring this attack on this unit and try to crack that point. So the first thing I'll do is I'll try to combat and refuse with those guys. Because if they can just run away, then this combat will end. And because they're leg infantry, they can only move up one hex. And I will be giving them a town, but I'd rather trade space for time right now. Because uh, they don't get another activation. And uh, if I don't take any step losses, that's super good for me. So let's go ahead and try to do a... We're going to get the terminology right this time, a combat refusal. So we're going to do an ER check on the lead unit. The lead unit will be that tank, seven, so we're looking for seven or less. All right, we got it. A three. I was sort of being mad at myself for not bringing an HQ unit down here because then I could start doing no retreats automatically. Uh, but since they're pretty high reactive units, they can just do this as well. So because he's MA2, or he's a red box, he can go back two spaces, and he will actually, he will go... Actually, we'll just keep him here, one. That means, oh, but then they would have... Yeah, we'll keep him there. So that means they can advance one, and I think he will bring this guy up. So the combat that ends for the 180th there, they didn't have to do anything else because I was able to uh, refuse. I could combat react with these guys, um... Let me see, does the combat end? Maybe it doesn't. That's an interesting question. If I use combat refusal with a unit, could end the combat ends? Could subsequent other units still conduct reaction movement if they were, you know, two hexes away and satisfied all the requirements? I, you know, that's a great question. Uh, I think regardless, I'm going to keep him there because he's sitting on some trails and it's close to this road. And that's kind of the big reason he's there. He's got trails uh, underneath him. So we're going to try to keep the leg units from using those trails. Okay, so that was the 180th. Uh, we know that the SS is up next. With the final uh, German shit in the cup. This is a fairly easy move, considering I no longer have to hold this hex. I think they're just going to come up here and start uh, getting active in the game. They have six movement. They're going to try to help out continuing the 180th. So we're going to keep them in this area. So it's and. We're going to keep them here. Can I do that? That's near three, six. There's four, so I can't quite keep them there, but I can keep them. We'll put them in that marsh hex. And the reason I wouldn't just go to the city is because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want them to come over here, and I want to be able to get over here on this. Uh, I guess there is no bridge. Oh, there's the bridge right there on the bridge hex already. Uh, and they can still motor up here and get to that battle if necessary. But I'm kind of thinking that these forces are going to be the main issue. Uh, although there is <laughs> scant little holding that. Um, oof, it's going to be tough. Should I go further with those guys? I mean, he could just go two more hexes. I mean, go one more. All right. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and move him over. Just we'll hedge. We'll go to the city and we'll hedge. Just get him a little closer. Okay, so that was the SS units. And now we have only two remaining Soviet ones. It's going to be either this, uh, the 70th or the 21st tanks. Soviets have taken their time and gotten in position, and now they're ready to conduct their attack on Salt Sea, and they need to start dislodging these units, or at least damaging them. And these are going to be the most gruesome attacks, because they're going to be assaults, because we're assaulting a town. Uh, unfortunately, this stack also has a strong point on it by now. Uh, that's how I denote strong points, but there's a marker there too. Um, so, not good combat, and... Um, so, but you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start wearing guys down. 
So the 80th is just going to start surrounding these guys. Unfortunately, they can't take the airport like they'd hoped. That would have been a little too good. So that was probably a good move by the Germans to assume that position. These guys will go here. That costs uh, two movement total. That costs two. That's three, four. Well, I'm counting that guy. That actually would have only been one, two, three for leg infantry. But for that guy, since he's red box, I need to keep him into account. And um, then I have these guys up here. Sort of wondering what they should do. Hmm. Should they go around the side and try to help the 21st tanks move? What should they do? <laughs> I should have thought about that. I wasn't really thinking about what they could accomplish. Not so worried about the cutting as much as I am worried about other things. Well, I think we're going to uh, take the infantry supply. The supply is blocked now. That's going to be bad news for them. Hmm. All right, sorry, I'm going to stop because I need to actually think about what I was going to do with those guys. Okay, sorry, that, I should have really thought about that, but what they're going to do is they're going to swing around here and then just sort of hang out over here so that maybe on the next turn they can either join up with the 21st tanks that are going to move up here or something and go attack the rear here and just put more pressure on this very vulnerable uh, middle section of the German line. I thought about maybe taking the... Uh, infantry unit over to here and, and reinforcing this hex, but I really don't think they're going to break this hex, and that, that could be hubris. That could definitely cost me. Um, but otherwise, this gives it gives this unit added punch to have this here. So they're going to move over here, and what they're going to do is they're going to go and one, two. Um, that would be three for the leg infantry. So let's just stop here and go and one, two. And this guy would actually go three and four, yeah, and that would be what, and one, two, three, four, and five, and he'll just hang out with that guy. So normally you don't break guys up, but because it was different movement values, I just did it for the sake of clarity. He moved as a stack, right? The rules are weird about you know breaking up stacks or moving in, you know, anyway, I did that. Okay, so they're moved, they're good, and so now we're going to focus on this attack. So I wrote over here, it's 21 defense in this hex. That's crazy. Uh, okay, so these guys have uh, 16. These guys have 17. So 17 and 16 is what? Uh, 33? So far we have 33. There's no artillery for the Germans to use, um, sadly. Uh, I can use artillery from over here for the... Other guys, but I need to add up the stack too. So I got a five and a six, that's 11. Three is 14, 15. And an engineer unit, which I'll explain is helpful in another way. So it gives us a total of 48. So I don't really need to use my artillery here because I'm, I can, the best I can get is like two to one. I would need 60, what is it, three? And I won't be able to get that much uh, added benefit from artillery. So I won't be using my artillery as the Soviets here. The engineering unit is helpful because when you use it in attack on a strong point or a town, uh, he gives he negates the strong point. So he's going to give us a, another DR. Um, he basically makes it like the strong point bonus doesn't exist. It doesn't negate the assault uh, requirement, but it does negate some of the DRMs. That's kind of helpful. Okay, so let's do it. We got 40 to 21, um, close air support. Yes, the Germans or the Soviets are gonna bring in uh, two planes. The Germans will bring in, actually they have super planes, yeah. The Germans will bring in their one plane. So where's my HQ? And I have my leader here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend, ooh, I'm gonna save that. So I'm gonna spend my one, can I use leader points on aircraft checks? Yes, okay. I spend my one leader point on an aircraft check for that uh, six unit because uh, the modifier is plus one for being mobile because I had to do a mobile. Okay. So let's roll our two dice for the Soviets. 
Let's roll the first one for the six. This is the one we're going to use the modifier on. No. And the four. No. Now for the Germans. Um, they actually will use an HQ on this because I think they have an HQ buried somewhere around here with points. There he is. He will use two. Alright, so. He gets a minus one to his roll. Yes. All right. He gets a plane. His plane succeeds. Uh, Soviets do not get a plane. Hmm. Not so good for the Soviets. So let's start putting our modifiers. Uh, oh, let's just back it up. Do I have this focus there? Let's come over here. Sorry, I'm going to do the combat over here. So we'll do uh, plus one because of close air support. Okay. We didn't have artillery, so now we do combat coordination. I am attacking from three or more hexes. Although, do I need to if I'm doing an assault? Uh, hold on, let's see. Nope, we don't need to, because if they're all from the same formation and not disrupted, then in assault combat, you don't need to coordinate. So we've passed that. So now we do defensive terrain. He gets plus, what's the town worth? Plus two. To start. Yeah, no combined arms shift available. Ah, if you're in a town, you don't get combined arms. Oh, that's good for us. Okay. So it's plus two for being in a town, plus one for a strong point. And then we get minus one for having an engineer. The ER differential, we're going to be using a six unit. Uh, we'll use. Actually, we'll use a six unit over here. Sorry, I should have been a little more careful on that. That'll be our lead unit for the attack. So the ER differential is going to be minus uh, or plus one. And uh, we don't get a combined arms bonus because we don't have... Oh, well, let me see. Do we get a combined arms bonus? Oh, no, because it has to be a town. That's why we don't get the combined numbers bonus. Anyway, that's good. Oh, that could have been a bit us. Anyway. Okay, so that's all the DRMs. We get plus two, plus one, so it's four. Oh my god, plus four total. Um, well, you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> Make sure I do all those DRMs right. So I don't have combat coordination. We did our, our we don't have any artillery for our planes. Yep, 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 okay. So he's going to use that lead unit, by the way, the motorized infantry. That's why he's doing that. So it's a plus four to the roll. We're getting a two to one assault. This is going to be brutal. Ten. That's not going to be good. <laughs> Attacker retreat disrupted. Okay, and it was not an armor attrition, so these guys are okay. Ah, oh, it's gonna be tough to crack this nut. Okay, so because of an assault, everybody goes back one, so that's one. Send him back two. Actually, we'll send him back two. And I'll come up and go there. And they're all disrupted, but that honestly won't matter because um, at the end of your turn, if they're not in an enemy zone of control, they automatically uh, leave disruption. So, I mean, I'll just mark it here, but like it's it's gonna go away uh, because the Eighth Panzer can't move and take advantage of keeping them disrupted. Uh, okay, well, you know that was that's the toughness, right? It's gonna be very difficult to crack that nut, um, but you know, so we gotta start somewhere. Okay, so the last guy to move will be Twenty First Tanks. That's the final activation for this turn. So they're down here doing their thing, and they're up there as well. So once again, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to think about now that this attack on Solzy has gone, did not go as well as I wanted. Time to think about what I want to do with these units. So taking a break, and we come back, we'll finish up the turn and get ready for 16 AM. OK, very quickly, we'll talk about the 21st tanks, since they're the last activation this turn. And my main idea is that they're just going to come and come up here and get in a ready position to help attack uh, the airport stack. If I can get 
70th round there, and hopefully the 21st tanks will move from up here so that next turn I can get a nice, um, well, hopefully a nice attack on this, or maybe this hex, we'll see. So to make that happen, I'm going to go uh, 1, 2. We're just going to go here. And the reason is that way I can stay in supply, because it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hexes away. Um, even if it rains next turn, because if it rains and you go through a marsh, you can only trace five hexes away to get to your supply. Um, I think that's right, yeah? Anyway, that should work out. And it'll allow them to come down here if they need to. And we'll come down with these guys, and what they will do is... Um, this guy will go and one, and two, three, four, because the railroad movement, and they'll hang out there. This guy will go... One, two, and three. And uh, I could come up here, but I don't want any attacks. I guess. Oh, yeah, because I could just run some tanks out and try to go run it down. So, what was that? That guy was over here. So, it's one, two, and three. Yeah, he has to go there. One, two, and I hate to put him there because he won't be able to make it, so we'll go here. And he might, he might sally forth and try to take out that artillery and tank, but if he does, he's going to weaken himself somewhere, and, and I might be able to take advantage of that. Um, maybe. Oof. I don't know. Should I leave that tank there? Well, I'll probably just get a little too risky because I want to finish this turn. Ah, oh, it is like a victory point. Hmm, he could slip out there easily and come in and go, and one, and two, yeah. It won't really matter, yeah. If I go there, then he can go here. Yeah, it won't really matter. He can, go and go. He can kind of come out and do what he wants, but um, he's going to have to move some guys around, so we'll do that. And if he attacks anyway, I can still use artillery to defend. It won't be so easy to take him out. Okay, so that's the end of that. Um, so let's take a look at the board. So, as you can see here, the... SS and the uh, one eight, or eight Panzer are taken on the 180th here, and I've so far managed to at least keep them from cutting the road. Uh, the 183rd has not activated this turn, but is still uh, being negated by that one tank, but this line is incredibly weak. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens next turn, who gains the initiative, and maybe if it's worth it to have the 183rd activate so they can push up, although they might be out of supply next turn, I'll have to check. And... The 21st tanks have completed the cutoff of Soltsy, but because of the air, airport there, we have to kind of rejigger who gets supply and who doesn't, because two hexes can get supply uh, from that airport, and they weren't able to cut it off. And as you can see, they're coming here. This is relatively vulnerable, so if they break through here, they could get a lot of easy hexes. And if we look up here, the third motorized is once again pushing towards Utrugorsh. Um, they stopped them from building a strong point there, but... Uh, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be slogging through, but now all their forces are grouped, and so next turn we'll have the ability to really dictate the kind of attack we want. Ah, so it's getting to the, it's getting down to the nitty gritty. Um, so there we go. That's Soltsy. That was the 15 p.m. turn. So now we're going to move on to the 16 a.m. turn. Oh, and I forgot. The big accomplishment, of course, was even though Soltsy was cut off, uh, supply was reestablished for all these units, so all of them will be back in supply for the Panzer. Very big. Okay, on to the next turn.